right. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, happy Friday. Uh, I've got the uh, thank you, Laura, for sending out the the bill report last night. Um, there was a bunch of activity this week with committee meetings in the House and Senate, and some of the bills on the tracker have moved forward. Um, this is still again organized by last action, so the top half of the report includes bills that had some kind of activity this week. Um, skipping down to ones we've talked about in the past. Uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me just a second. My wife is having car problems and calling me just one second. I had that issue recently where my wife's car just completely died. <laughs> That's no fun. That literally oh, happened to me last night and my husband had to come help me. Nice. OK, yeah, I'm good. I'm back. Um, uh, so um, anyway, the. Um, the ones we talked about in the past that are uh, that are of interest to us at move this week. So the, the facility operators bills and House and Senate advanced um, this week. Um, I believe, yeah, uh, in the House, this bill is already on the floor. This is the one that allows for reciprocity for licensed operators from other states. Um, uh, in the Senate version is uh, in the second stop and it it advanced. Uh, to this uh, advance through the second stop this week. Um, Aglands, I'm not really tracking Aglands, um, but it moved this week. Uh, let me see here. Environmental protection. This is a bill that uh, we've talked about before. It's got a bunch of things in it. This is the House Companion to Broders Environmental Protection Bill. It's a, I would call it a train bill. Um, because it has a, a bunch of different things in it from Indian River Lagoon to um, uh, groundwater to wastewater capital improvement schedules. And it's got a, a, a piece in there, and this is probably the one the most notable piece that you've seen some press about, is it expands the wastewater grant program and further limits the installation of, of conventional septic tanks in certain areas and impaired watersheds. Um, so that bill is moving. It is um, on its second stop, passed through its second stop this week. Um, uh, I'm sorry, passed through its first stop this week in the House. In the Senate, it is um, uh, on its second stop as well. Floating vessel platforms is moving for anybody that cares about that stuff. There's the Senate companion to the wastewater facility operator bill. Uh, this administrative procedures bill, we talked about it last week. Um, this is the one that requires that CERCs be publicly noticed uh, like the rule. So this statement of estimated regulatory costs and would would have impacted the DEP stormwater rulemaking if this were law. So interestingly, um, if uh, if if the stormwater rule is not ratified this year and this becomes law, then if it if it ever has to go back through again, it's going to um, it's going to increase the requirements on the department to go through to go through rulemaking. Um, in that it would require the CERCs all be publicly noticed and publicly advertised um, along with the rule. Phosphor gypsum study bill is moving. Flood damage prevention bill is moving. This is the one that if you if a local community raises the minimum elevation for uh, flood damage prevention, then it also raises the uh, the max height by the same amount. So your the buildings aren't squeezed. Uh, there's the companion of the phosphor gypsum study bill. Uh, companion of the floating vessel platform bill. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I know a few of y'all are interested in this um, expansion of the the vulnerability studies. This one um, didn't move this week, but it it is in this la its last stop in the House, and it did not move this week in the Senate. So we're we're starting to get to the bills now that didn't move this past week. 
uh, but are still moving. There's Broder's bill. Um, so who's got who's got questions? No questions. You guys are making it really easy on me. Um, the, the, let me just keep talking a little bit longer. Uh, the ratification bill for DEP. Uh, this one is still sitting in its last stop in the House and Senate. Uh, with the department still hoping that two weeks from today, uh, its stormwater rule, if it's not challenged, would be ready for um, uh, to send to the legislature for ratification. And this bill, SB 7002 and House Bill 7027, uh, could be amended at its at their last stops. Um, but we're we're hearing Alan and I are hearing from multiple people that the legislators have no interest in amending this, the DEP stormwater rule onto this bill. Um, but nevertheless, it, it's sitting there. Um, if it if it uh, if it moves out of its last stop, um, I think it makes it a lot harder to add on, and I think that would be a, a, a pretty strong signal that the legislature um, isn't interested in waiting on the, the stormwater rule. So then what happens? Remind me the process. So so what happens, unfortunately, is that the rule will be a final rule, but uh, unef you know, not effective because it requires ratification. And without ratification, it would it would just sit in kind of limbo, I'm afraid. Uh, so what I'm what I'm hoping, Michael, is that we get the department some direction uh, from the legislature, I think would be the ideal place to get that direction. Um, with some, um, you know, indication of, of of a problem, like something that needs to be fixed. I think the department would need a catalyst to open a rule back up if it has already gone through rulemaking and a notice of change and didn't get a challenge, then the department kind of, you know, would would have a hard time opening it back up for quote no reason. Right. So I think I think if the legislature gave it a reason, like uh if 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 an amendment were filed and then in discussion at a hearing when the amendment is voted down, the legislature could say publicly from from a committee, we're not ratifying this bill because we think that a numeric reduction is not a consistent application of a net improvement performance standard, which is what we directed DEP to do in, in Senate Bill 712. And so we're rejecting this ratification. Like if, if, the, if the legislature made a statement like that, then the department would have that statement to rely on to open the rule back up. Well, Jackson can open it. Yeah, and, and I think it's far more likely that not having a public announcement of the DEP bill at a committee um, because I don't think the legislature wants to, you know, would want to take that on. I think a, a safer place for the legislature to respond with, you know, with a with a, a a technical or a legal justification for not advancing the ratification, it would be through JAPSI. And I'm um, I've talked to a few people about it. We probably will not see a JAPSI response like that um, uh, right right now while the rule is still in its in its uh, 21 day period uh, because I think that gives the department an opportunity to fix it. And if the strategy is still to to kick the can, then we probably want to wait until that 21 day period expires and then have JAPSI tell DEP it's no good. But that but that's me pretending to be political consultant and an attorney. And I'm, and I'm neither of those things. <laughs> hey, Jeff, yes, um, I can tell you there's going to be a call at 11 o'clock this morning that I'm going to be on with Representative Payne. 
on this issue, and it's the home builders, AIF, and, and the developers in that group. Um, and I think what they're looking for is to make sure the final nail is in the coffin of ratification. I think there are still some that are nervous uh, that if this 21 day clock runs and nobody challenges it, that you know we might get a surprise in week seven or eight. Uh, I'm not so sure that would happen, but uh, um, just so you know that, and, and they're looking to set a, um, uh, a meeting up with with bro doer to talk about it as well so so they're still working hard at, uh, on the you know just stop the ratification side of it yeah. uh, which i i i think you've already said that's the most likely scenario but just in case they continue to dog this one a little bit understood well so i'm i'm not sure i know the right <clears throat> the right strategy on when to deploy the rap the the japsy um plan and and maybe if there's concern about a potential surprise ratification maybe maybe the the solution is now um because because really the there there isn't i don't think there really is time for the department to go back and fix it and try to bring it back again uh so if if we wanted to um uh be on the side of 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 uh, of just shutting this thing down for for good for now until it's fixed. Uh, I think Japsy could do that. Well, I I can tell you it, it's interesting inside that group because they're not in favor of a challenge. They're not in favor of Japsy saying anything or anybody saying anything um, because they're afraid they'll hear the wrong thing. Right? It's kind of like you know you can go to the attorney general for an opinion, but you might not get an opinion you want. So they would rather not see a judge involved or Japsy or anybody else and kind of leave DEP hanging, which kind of tells me that, you know, they may not be that sincere about, you know, in the future, we really want to see clean water. Um, but, you know, on our side of it, I think this gets us, hopefully we'll get there and there won't be ratification this year. And I think, you know, as we discussed on the phone a few days ago, it gets us in a position where, you know, we can go to DEP and say, look, you know, the environmentalists hate your rule. Uh, the business community hates your rule. Let's sit down and see what we can work out and yeah. see if we can't get to some some conclusion. Nobody's ever going to be 100 percent satisfied, but let's see if we can't do something to move the ball forward. And I, I think it puts us in a really good position. Yeah. OK, I understand. Hey, Bill, thanks for sharing the uh, news on the PFAS uh, primary drinking water standard. I heard that was coming. So it's officially dropped. Yeah, it's dropped and the public comment period uh, it ends May 30th, 2023. OK. So for us of us that haven't been following PFAS since the last uh, <laughs> session, what does this actually establish some criteria for the for the numbers? Yes, it that does. was one of the issues, right? Is that there was no yes. there were no data or no values. OK, correct. It establishes numbers and establishes means of calculating numbers as well that are site specific. Uh, and they say they can be tested down to, but there are still best I know only handful of labs that can really do that. Um, it, it, they present I l participated on the 29th and maybe some others did as well in uh, in a technical seminar that EPA presented. Uh, you may choose. I sent a hyperlink to the CFR. If you want, I can send the hyperlink to the EPA website because you can go back and the presentation should now be uh, uploaded because uh, they were going to do that and you'll see the limits. You'll see their methods of calculation and other things. And for those with particularly public drinking water clients that's where uh, the the initial push is first time they got to be compliant is three years from now so some of us may not see that but uh many of us like you two guys will uh so it is it is it, it's real it is the emerging contaminant du jour but that means we must address it so i'll uh i'll go blind again and i'll i'll find you the epa website and i'll post it it's the emerging contaminant to rule them all.
All right. What else does anybody want to talk about? <laughs> I haven't heard any chatter from from DP on stormwater. They're in the their cooling off period. Yeah, Jeff, Bob Higgins. Yes, sir. I'm gonna call John up and find out what's going on. It's a cool cooling off for a week, so I'll give him a call. See what they're right. up to. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to hear uh, what they're thinking right now. There, there was a little bit of news coverage of the change. You know, we were quoted again, um, but um, not a well, not a ton of coverage about it. Well, a thousand friends is all over. Hey, you made it in the Miami Herald, Jeffrey. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Bucket list checked off. There you go. And well, you know, the Bradenton Herald. Uh, yeah, that's that that's that's the creme de la creme. Yeah. That's right. Been uh, watching um to see whether uh, Craig Pittman's gonna tweet about me again. Did he? No way. No, no, I mean it, he did, but it's been a while. It's been when I was at DEP, he was tweeting about me. I'll get Edie to call him. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Hey, Jeff, this is Gary Holwalt. Are you yes, hearing anything about DEP updating the WOTUS definition for 404? I mean, they're still using the Navigable Water Protection Act, which is way gone now. They they are. They are. So, OK, so the um, the uh, official position of DEP as as communicated to EPA in, in writing, you know, both in the WOTUS comments and, and if you want to have some some pure entertainment, uh, read uh, John Truitt's letter in the public record to the WOTUS, um, you know, public comment. Um, uh, but 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 back to back to DEP's adoption of it, they have by federal rule, they have one year to adopt to conform the state rule to a to the federal rule when there's a federal rule change and so uh when the new if when, when the new WOTUS when the new federal WOTUS is final rule then that will start the one-year clock uh, it, it was final but wasn't it uh but i think it was immediately challenged and and maybe, only in two states, Idaho and Texas. Okay. Okay. Who, whose letter was that, Jeff? Uh, DEP wrote a public comment letter to the EPA WOTUS rule rulemaking in the Federal Register. It's a entertaining response. Uh, I'm mean, gonna have is, to look that up now. <laughs> yeah, no, you you should. Um, Sackett is due in the next sac the the second Supreme Court case about Lotus uh, right. is is due to drop in the next sixty days, and um, and it could drop any day. So uh, that it, a lot of watchers of Lotus believe that. EPA that the EPA new the new EPA rule is going to be significantly undercut by Sackett two, maybe even invalidated by Sackett two. So there's a lot of reasons for DEP to kind of just sit until yeah, okay. the thing shakes out. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I like I like this uh, stump the chump format. Who else has got something random? Hey, Bill. Bill does. Coming <laughs> at you from energy now. That's right. Following up on random, we had our call yesterday regarding the climate uh, pollution reduction grants. And I just want to let you know that um, even though it may not be progressing in the state, I have spoken with some of the uh, resiliency groups around, like the East Central Florida Regional Resiliency Group, and they are putting together an application or a notice of intent to participate for the uh, Orlando MSA right now. 
So uh, they said they were on a call with other groups as well. So I anticipate there will be a multiple multiple MSAs pursuing that. Thank you, Bill. And and I'm not um, ruling out the possibility that there's a uh, a governor's letter, you know, sent up to EPA today. Like like we heard from from uh, Jeff Kerner yesterday, the last time um, we waited until the last day. Hey Jeff, if I can butt into your program for one second, uh, Bill Bradford, um, how was that resiliency talk with uh, Casey DeSantis? Wonderful. I have never <laughs> seen resiliency applied to mental health like that. But Tracy <laughs> Galantine and I were there, and we felt right at home along the mental <laughs> resiliency uh, topics. I so have please, to tell, please I have thank to tell you the story us. real quick. Yeah, we get we get a call at like I don't know four o'clock in the afternoon from the governor's office that they're looking for some attendees at a at a press conference or something that the the first lady's doing and you know can we get three or four people and you got to have your name the names to them in an hour and what's it about resiliency so we grab Brad I mean it was like the day of our board meeting so we we grab Bill and we grab a couple of others and get them to go over and it turns out it, the next morning. It turns out that it's a resiliency of, on mental health for school children. <laughs> and, 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 and they got seated in the third row so they couldn't slip out and uh, had, had to sit through it. So but my apologies, Bill, but that, that's that's a good one. <laughs> so, Bill, thank you so much for doing that. And, and no, I, I really had no more information other than resiliency. So, um, but I, thanks for being a good sport. Well, Tracy and I both enjoyed it. It was a, a lot of fun, very interesting, and the coffee and the tea were just wonderful. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bill, if I hear anything, I'll I'll reach out to Jeff. If I hear anything about that, um, about the governor weighing in on that, I will shoot you and um, uh, uh, shoot you out a text real quick. Thank you. I'm also following yep. up with the East Central Florida Regional Resiliency Council, and I'll let you know what I hear. Okay, thank you. Yep, I have the mimosas ready. That's right. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> about that conversation. All right, well, please keep uh, uh, those emails coming if you've got any interest in uh, policy bills that are moving or not moving. Um, I'm, I'm happy to focus on, on something. I've, uh, haven't haven't gotten anything from any of y'all yet. So um, so far, I think the the only one that I would say is is really interesting this year is that environmental protection bill by Broder um, 1632 is probably uh, the most interesting bill from my perspective right now. So. Um, it, unless you all have something uh, more to talk about or another bill of interest, what I'll plan to do next Friday is I'll take some of this extra time and instead of playing stump the Trump, I'll do a, a deeper dive on that um, environmental protection bill to let you all know what's in it. Sounds good. That's good. That's thank good you, Jeff. Me. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Right. Hope, hope everybody Thanks. has a great weekend. You too. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thank Bye, you Jeff. all. Thanks. Bye. Bye.